Ever since Philipson introduced the concept of linguistic imperialism, there has been a growing interest in the area and also a growing awareness as to how a language can exercise hegemonic control over the world. Because of this reason, we see there is also some resistance to the dominance of English. For example, um, it is believed that the spread of English at the cost of other languages should be completely resisted. We see that um, in Canada, we have um, uh, this bilingualism or bilingual education policy with French and this is an attempt at resisting the hegemonic spread of English. Philipson divides the English-speaking world into uh, two groups. One he calls the core group and the other uh, the periphery. The core group comprises the same countries as the inner circle countries of Kachru's model of world Englishes, which means all the countries where English is used as a native language. The periphery is further subdivided into two groups. One group comprises the countries that use English as an international link language, for example, Japan, Korea, China, where English is used only for international communication. And the other group comprises countries that in use English for various international purposes as well and where English is used in uh, several domains, for example, India, Pakistan, uh, Singapore, etc. In the periphery countries uh, or the countries where English is used as a second language uh, or English serves the purpose of an official language and is used in many important domains, it is looked more as a commodity than a language and a commodity that is linked with social advantage. So people look at language as a thing, as a product that can uh, get them a lot of political, social, economic power and can put them at a position of advantage compared to the people who do not know English. According to Philipson, um, English replaces, uh, in fact, displaces many languages and this displacement of other languages at the hands of English is going on not only in uh, the periphery countries um, but also in the core countries. Uh, because English has taken over uh, important domains of government and education. There are many factors which are considered responsible for suppressing other languages. Among these factors, education is considered the biggest factor which causes the suppression of uh, other languages. When education is imparted in a foreign, in an alien language, that language is automatically privileged. So people who speak other languages then start uh, turning away from their own language and start showing a preference for that foreign alien language which can get them education and subsequently better economic and social position. Um, so we see that um, edu in education an alien language is preferred and privileged and this happens in Pakistan as well. So we all know of schools where the use of Urdu is completely banned and where um, students are fined if they use English and of course speaking Punjabi is out of the question. So in this way education suppresses other languages and it does not only forces a foreign language on um, people but also alters their cultural and um, social values and forces those uh, foreign uh, social and cultural values on people. Um, 
another factor which is responsible for uh, suppressing uh, different languages at the cost of one dominant language is media we see that uh, powerful media uses english and therefore people who want to uh, remain abreast of the latest developments in the world or those who want to be identified with people who are uh, better aware than most other people they turn to english for several uh, social reasons as well as practical reasons this uh, concept of linguistic imperialism um, the concept that uh, the hegemonic control of english over the rest of the world um, and um, the spread of english at the cost of other languages has obtained support from the united nations as well and united nations has passed several res resolutions on lingu linguistic human rights on the protection of linguistic human rights and preservation of cultural and linguistic diversity so these documents support multilingualism and completely reject the idea of endangering other languages by single mindedly promoting just one language so these resolutions um, promote the idea of multilingualism and reject the idea of um, promoting or focusing only on english um the degree of seriousness which is attached by the uno to the idea of uh, um, saving other languages or to resisting linguistic imperialism can be understood by the fact that they equate um, the the threat to other languages with uh, disturbing the biodiversity of the planet so they believe that if this um, uh, balance of languages is disturbed if only only one language is given privilege at the cost of other languages this will disturb the this is as serious as disturbing the biodiversity of the planet so we see uh, many people um, scholars um, and other um, organizations in the world who uh, show some resistance to the idea of spreading english at the cost of other languages